Welcome back to the series of short tutorials on how to perform reproductive analysis using the instructions in the standard operating procedure linked in the description below. For this tutorial, we're going to determine whether there's a sex-based bimodal size distribution in the population that you've analyzed. Um, this tutorial assumes that you have a spreadsheet such as this at your disposal. If not, there's instructions on how to build such a spreadsheet in the standard operating procedure. It also assumes that your data are already loaded. If you don't know how to do that, please see the uh, link to the video below that explains how to incorporate or import your data into uh, one of these spreadsheets. So this is one of the cases where the new worksheet doesn't uh, automatically incorporate any sort of information. We need to carry it over or cut and paste it or copy and paste it from the data sheet. We want histosex, so we'll select that column, copy it and paste it into column A. And then we want the length data. And we'll copy and paste that into the worksheet as well. A little bit more work to do with this now. We wanna sort it. So here we're going to select both columns, click on sort. Be sure that my data has headers boxes checked. We can sort uh, according to either one of these uh, headings. We want to sort by histosex to separate the males from the females. So at the top of this uh, data now, we have all of the females listed. First the immature females, then the mature females, then the males show up, first the immature ones, and then the mature ones. And down at the bottom are all the ones that were unknown. Either we lost the tissue section or the, the tissue that was sampled turned out not to be gonads. So we couldn't histologically determine the sex of that specimen. What we're going to do now is a t-test to determine whether there was a significant difference in the mean length of males and females. But first we need to determine which t-test is appropriate. Uh, so to do that, we're going to do an f-test for two sample variances. We're going to select the lengths of all the females first. And then we're going to select the lengths of all the males. Just as we've done in the past, we would like our analysis to show up right here with our data. So we'll check output range, click in the box, and then select D1. And here are the results. This is a test that tells us whether the variances are equal or not. If this value, the p-value, is less than 0.05, then there is a significant difference in the variances. If this value, p-value, is greater than 0.05, then there is no significant difference in the, in the, um, the variances of these two data sets. In this case, the uh, p-value is much less than 0.05. This is 8.72 times 10 to the negative 5, so 0 0.00008, which is uh, much less than 0.05. This tells us that now the appropriate thing to do t-test-wise is to choose the t-test assuming unequal variances. So go back to data analysis. We have three t-tests that we can choose from. The ones that are of interest here are either assuming unequal variances or assuming equal variances. If this had been greater than 0.05, we would choose a t-test assuming equal variances. In our case, it's less than 0.05, so we're going to choose a t-test assuming unequal variances. We're going to enter the exact same data. First, all the female lengths. and then all the male lengths. And just as we did before, we'd like our analysis to show up right here at the top of the page next to all of our other information. We're gonna choose H1 for the output. And this gives us our results. So here, variable one was the female length. The mean length of those females was 23.5 centimeters. The mean length of the males in variable two was 28.6. Now, were these significantly different or not? 
We go down to the p-value for the two-tailed t-test to get the answer. If this is less than 0.05, then there is a significant difference in the lengths between these two sexes. If this is greater than 0.05, then there is no significant difference in the lengths of these two sexes. Here we have 1.59 times 10 to the negative 33, so very much less than 0.05. So we say, yes, there was a significant difference in the mean length of males and females. Normally, we would go ahead and show you how to plot this. Uh, this is just information that's used sometimes uh, when analyzing reproductive data. There's really no reason uh, for our purposes here to plot this. So our next tutorial is going to be how to determine size of maturity.